Hi, this is Hongshu from MotionCircles.com. In this video, I'll show you how I worked on the 3D ring animation in After Effects. I'll show you how to work with Cinema 4D render, lights, camera, adding reflection and texture to 3D surfaces, and how to stylize your scene with gradient color. Lots of fun stuff, let's get started. First, let's create a composition, 1920 by 1080, change the renderer to Cinema 4D, click OK. Now, let's draw an ellipse over here. And we can delete the fill, change the stroke to pure red, and then change the width to 60 pixels. Make sure it's a perfect circle, so I'm going to the size here. and reposition the anchor point to the center of the circle here. Reposition the circle to the center of the composition. Call this one ring one. Turn on the 3D. I'm gonna go to two views here. Change it to two views. And then for the right hand side, I'm gonna change it to the left view. First of all, let's go to the geometry options, change the bevel to convex, change it to three, and then extrusion depth, change it to 50. So we have some extrusion going on. Let's go to anchor point, make sure we change the anchor point to the center of the ring here. I'll move it by 25 because our extrusion depth is 50, so divided by 2, which is 25. Now I'm going to rotate this ring here. R for rotation, change the orientation to 90 degrees, so we have the active camera view, the rings facing side to us, and then the left view, the, the ring is facing front. And now, let's add some color. Let's go into the ellipse 1 under content, add a side color here. For the side color, I'll use a green color, so change it to pure green. We're using RGB color to color this ring here. And then we're going to add a bevel color. For the bevel color, we'll use pure blue, so 255, and then change this to 0. Pure blue here, so we have RGB color ring here. Now. Let's duplicate the rings here, two times, one, two, and we can make it smaller. As for scale, we can unlink this property here, change it to 65 on the X, 65 on the Y, so that we're not modifying the thickness of the ring here. And then scale over here, change this to 45, change this one to 45 again. Now I need to push one of the ring outside so that I can see three together on top of each other. So I'm going to just drag these out here for the second ring. I'm going to drag it over here. And then for the third ring, I'm going to drag it over here. Now we're going to add some lights here. So let's go to new lights. I'll go to add a parallel light here and then change the intensity to 2000. This one is going to go from top to bottom like this. It's going to go from top to bottom like this and then let's duplicate the light here double click change the intensity to 1000 this one is going to go from front to the back so front to the back i need to change this one to a top view that looks better and then i'm going to duplicate this one again this one is going to go from back to the front so we have Three lights going on, that's good. Then I'm gonna add a camera. So let's go to camera. This one, I'm gonna use 35 millimeter, click OK. I'll change the top view back to the left view here. And if I zoom out, you can see the camera over here. And what I wanna do is I also want to add a null object here. And then move the null object in 3D space. First of all, change the null object to 3D, and then push it over here in the center, link the camera to the null, that's good. And now I can use the orientation and position of the null object to reposition the rings inside my active camera view. So I'm going into the orientation of the null object, which is gonna be the camera control. And then I'm gonna turn this ring here like this, and then turn it down here 
and then maybe make it bigger. Keep the camera bigger, closer like this. Okay, that's cool. And now I'm going to add a keyframe on the camera control null object. So add one keyframe over here and then go forward maybe five seconds. Rotate this orientation here like this. So this is going to be my animation. At the beginning, it's going to be facing this side here. Like this. And then it's going to rotate like this. We're going to turn on some material options for the rings here. We're going to do a 20% diffuse, 50% shyness, and then the 50% reflection intensity. And then I'm going to duplicate the material option and paste it onto ring 2 and ring 3. So they all have the similar material options over here. That's good. And that completes our setup for the camera. And now I just want to do some animation on the ring itself as well. So let's go to animate the position property, hit P on the keyboard, and then we're going to add a keyframe, go to for 20 frames. This is going to be my final position. So at the beginning, I want each ring to be outside of the frame. So I'll just push these rings backward to be outside of the frame. And then I'm going to just easy ease the keyframe go to the speed graph and then I'm going to drag this curve easing them all the way in like this that's good and then I'm going to cut a couple frames over here in the front I want the third ring to come in first and then after a couple seconds the second ring come in and then after a couple frames the first ring come in so I'm going to come in like this and make sure we also have the camera movement on the camera control null. It's not very visible right now, so I want to make it more visible. This could be my final position. So at the beginning, I want it to be, yeah, like this. So this is at the beginning, and then it's gonna turn. Okay, cool, that's good. I'll move the three layers back. Okay, that completes our setup for the ring. Let's pre-compose everything, call this one ring, animation and then let's add some background over here so let's go add a solid background first i'll add a gradient ramp and for this one i'll change it to radio gradient i'll drag so i'll swap the color i'll drag the light onto one corner which is top right and then i want to drag the black over here almost like the light is coming from this side here so I'll duplicate that and then change the color to a light blue to darker blue here. And then change the blending mode to overlay. Now we have a subtle background. It's looking pretty cool. Now I need to change this ring RGB ring. Now I need, now I need to change this RGB ring into a grayscale. Well, let's go add another solid. Call this one red. This one could be the highlights so we're gonna use the gradient ramp for the highlights let me swap the color it's gonna be the white to a lighter gray and then I'm gonna sample this one over here sample this one over here I'm gonna use this one to color my red channel of the rings let's use the set matte effect here and then change the matte for a red channel and then change it to the ring animation, change this one to effects and mask. And now you see I'm using this highlight grayscale to color my red channel in the rings here. So let's duplicate that, change this one to the blue, which is the bevel. And then I'm gonna use the same ramp, gradient ramp to color the blue channel. However, I'm gonna swap it so that it's having a different direction. And now let's duplicate it again for this one. I'm gonna use the green which is the full range and then we're gonna go from let me swap the color again but this time instead of going to lighter gray I'm gonna go to completely full black so it's gonna get the full range of the color here and in this channel I'm gonna change the green channel so now we have the green channel the blue channel and the red channel all colored and we have a gray scale going on over here that's good and then I need to duplicate this ring animation put it on top and call this one ring animation overlay and let's change the blending mode to overlay here 
it's going to overlay the color on top of my grayscale. However, for this one, I need a CC toner effects. And then I'm going to change it to Pentone. And in terms of color, we can choose a bunch of colors we want, but I have a color palette here. So I'm going to sample my color for the CC toner effect. Dark blue and this one over here. And that's got my CC toner. And also on top of my overlay here, I also want to add a layer style, which is the gradient overlay. And for the gradient overlay, let me also turn on my color over here. For the gradient overlay, I want to make sure I'm changing the color to this color that I have here, the green to the orange and then to the purple. That looks like a good color. And then we need to change the blending mode to overlay as well. So we're all overlaying this color on top of the rings here. That's looking pretty cool. And now I'm going to turn off my color, right click, go to add another layer style, which is the inner shadow. And for the inner shadow, let's make the color into a purple. And then let's make the size bigger. You can see over here, you can make the distance bigger, size bigger. You can see these are the inner shadow that we are putting in. So I want to make it pretty subtle over here like that. It's good. And now all I need is to add another rectangle and then I'm going to delete the stroke. And in terms of the fill color, I'll go to add a gradient fill. And for the color, I'm going to use a color that I already have here. Just sample this color here. It's going to go from this blue to a almost white and then to a orange and then to a pink. So this is going to be my color for the color overlay layer. So I'm going to drag it diagonally like this and then I'm going to overlay this on top of my ring. So I'm going to go to the blending mode to do an overlay. And in that case, you can see my ring over here getting a lot more color. I'm losing some of the background color, I think. So I want to drag this black over here. Don't want to lose too much background color, but you can see we already have a bunch of texture going on on top of the rings here. And for the color, if you don't like it, we can change some of the color in the gradient option. So maybe if we don't like the green, we can modify it, change it to like a blue over here, and then maybe change one to a yellowish color. However, you want to modify this color, right? From this color overlay layer style, depends on your preference. And now what I want to do is I want to add a adjustment layer. And then over here, put it in a CC light ray effect. So for the CC light ray, I'm going to put it over here. You can see it's going to generate a bunch of light rays. So I'm going to animate that, put a keyframe on the center. At the beginning, it will be just outside. And then after a couple frames, It'll come in like this, shoot over here. That's good. And then I'm going to add another CC light burst over here, change the ray length to maybe five. So we're adding a bit more motion blur like that. And maybe the color is a bit washed out. So let's try use a curves effect to bring more contrast to our scene here. Can make it a bit darker. And for the background, maybe I can make it a bit more blue instead of so dark. So I'll drag the background color to make it a, more, a bit more bluish. It's looking cool. And that's good. And then we're going to go add a new solid layer. And on the solid layer, we're going to add a CC ball action effects. So for this one, we're just going to do scatter 1000 and then 20 for the ball size and then 20 for the gray spacing so we're going to add a fill color effect as well to make the balls into a white color so that we have some background going on and then we're going to add a fast box blur effect to make the backgrounds a bit more blurred out and in this case it's not moving at all, so we need to add a camera. So I'm going to pre-compose this one, call this one CC Ball Action. And then I need to copy my camera inside the ring animation and paste it into 
my ball action. So in that case, So in this case, we're going to have some movement based on the camera movement of my CC ball action. You can see it's giving me a 3D space over here. It's going to have a sense of space going on. So if I go back to my main comp, and this is the sense of space we're getting with the CC ball action effects. The last thing we can do is basically just adding in our little animation of some balls coming in. And um, let me paste it in. It's basically just one circle shooting into the scene to reach this jump point, and then it's going to get sucked in by the jump point like that. So this is going to be my little circle over here. I can still, maybe it's too small. I can make it a little bit bigger. So it's going to come in like this, and then to this jump point, And then after a couple frames, it's going to go shoot out like that. So that's my final animation. Let's take a look. That's it with this video. Hope you like it and learned a couple of tips and tricks for your next project. Don't forget to check out our project file shop for many amazing After Effects project files to improve your skills. If you're serious about improving your animation skills and become a professional, check out our Motion Insider membership at motioncircles.com to access our beginner animation courses trusted by 50,000 plus students worldwide. Thank you so much for watching this video. I'll see you in the next one.